I'm going to talk to you today about Meteor, which is a web platform. I, I'll do a little bit, a little survey. How many of you are web developers? Okay, some. Use Node.js? Wow, okay, okay, one, two, okay. So I won't continue to ask how many of you use Meteor. <laughs> so Meteor is a full stack web platform for single web page applications. Okay, web, web page applications are applications like Gmail, where the page doesn't refresh when you do operations, like creating a new email or searching for mail and so on. Meteor connection with the server is done via sockets and not using HTTP requests. Sockets are basically constant connection between the server and the client that allow input-output from both ways. Okay, so for example, uh, in Meteor, if we have an email app like Gmail and a new mail received, then immediately the server let the client know that a new email received and the email appears immediately on the browser without having to refresh the page or doing anything. In the past, there was an approach of the client to ask from time to time the server what's going on, whether there are any new emails and so on. There is no need here to do such a thing. Another thing about Meteor is that it is very modular. It's built out of packages starting from the core of Meteor. It's just a bunch of packages that deal with many of Meteor, Meteor capabilities, and it allows developers to develop their own packages very easily, which you, you, so, you open source guys should know, allow the creation of very vibrant communities around Meteor. And we already see many interesting packages. So I'll begin with a small background about how Meteor projects are being built. And then, once the background will be enough, I'll show you how an implementation of uh, chat is being done in Meteor with only 40 lines of JavaScript, real time and everything. Okay, so we'll do it together. But to begin, let's explain how a Meteor project looks like. In Meteor, since it's Node.js based, both the server and the client are written in JavaScript. You put all your files into the Meteor project folder and you can have some of the JavaScript code to be available for both the server and the client. For example, if you want, if you have code that deals with validation, and you can just write it once, and it will be available for both the server and the client. And then you have folders in which you can put content that will be available only in the server environment and only in the client. And you have the templates. So this is a, an example templates. It's, it looks like HTML, but it only uses the markup of HTML. Templates in Meteor has three types of containers. One is a container for head, one for body, and one for general templates. Whatever you put in head, Meteor will know to put in the head section of the eventual HTML page that will be created out of your project. Whatever you put in body is essentially the main template, the template that will load other templates. Uh, in that case, you can see that it says that today's weather, and then it loads the forecast template. That notion is to load template. So, and the forecast template says it will be a prediction, okay? That's a helper. We'll, later, I'll show you how we implement a helper. And then, tonight. So it will be something tonight, and then there is a button down, downstairs, okay? So, templates has helpers, like the prediction helper. Here, you can see how we implement helpers. So the prediction helper in that case, randomly pick one of two, either cloudy or cool and dry. So whenever you use that, prediction helper within the forecast template, like you can see here, template point forecast prediction, whenever it will be used, this method will run, and the actual output will be in, will be substitute with the helper. Another thing we have on templates are events. 
In that case, whenever you click on the button of, uh, of the forecast template, an alert will appear that says clicked. I just wanted to demonstrate here how events are being defined. Later I'll show more interesting examples. Now a little bit more about packages. If, for example, you want to use CoffeeScript instead of JavaScript, if you want to use less, if you want user support, if you want Bootstrap, which is a CSS UI library, and if you want internationalization, you can use packages to install them. It's very easy to install packages. You just MRT add, and then the name of the package, and then the package become part of your project. You can immediately have coffee file within your client or server code, and Meteor will compile them and will deliver them to your, will deliver them and use them. Another three key concepts are sessions. Meteor, that mechanism and how uh, it delivers it to the clients, uh, and reactivity. These three concepts I'll talk with you about in the actual demonstration, which we will just start. So in that demonstration, what I'm going to do is to show how this chat is implemented. This chat has very simple capabilities. OK, you can write a message, post it. You can set your username. Right now, it's guess something. OK, so I can set my username and then Whenever I'll send a message, my name will appear with, along with my message. It's a very simple implementation of chat. Unsecured chat, but it might be useful for, for playing, okay? And it is useful for explaining the different aspects of Meteor. So instead of tiring you with me trying to implement it during the talk, I took a video of me implementing it, and I'll just plate and we'll go through the process together. To begin a new Meteor project, you just type in the command line Meteor create open. Uh, in, that case, the name of, in that case, the name of the project is open chat. After it's created, I'm getting into the folder. There is a bit of scaffolding files uh, that are automatically generated with new projects, which I'll just remove. Then I add the packages that I use for that project, which are bootstrap. There is another package which is CoffeeScript, and another one which is Collection Hooks, which I'll explain more about later. So let's make it a little bit faster. Okay. Now, I'm creating the main folders of the Meteor project. As I said, one folder for code that will be available anywhere, one folder for code that will be available only for the server, and one only for the client. And I'm starting to create the basic UI, OK? I, I'm copying the basic UI from another file. And the basic CSS for the project. For those of you who are web developers, there is no need to declare what file you're using. If the file is within the project, it will be loaded to the client automatically. I'm starting the server by running Meteor. And now, on port 3000, we'll be able to see what I showed you earlier, but darker. OK, this is dark chat. OK, and right now it's only, uh, you, we can say it's only the mock. Nothing really function here. And we'll start to make it functional. I'm, I'll begin by separating the two components of the chat, which are the messages area and the input uh, for new message, to templates which later I'll be able to implement helpers and events on, OK? So I'll make it faster. Okay. 
and now I'm loading the templates in the appropriate place where, where they were. When I'm going back to the browser, you can see that nothing really changed, which is a good thing. We didn't meant to change anything. One thing about the development process in Meteor, whenever you change a file, browser will reload itself automatically. You don't have to even refresh the project. Uh, it's very convenient and make it even faster to develop web pages that way. Now, I'm going into actually init and define the, the database, okay? <coughs> the database in Meteor is based on Mongo, okay? So we have collections. I'm going to define a collection. The definition of the collection will be anywhere, not only for the server, because Meteor make it transparent to us to manipulate the database from everywhere. Of course, that when it comes to security, there are ways to prevent people in the client removing things we don't want them to remove or changing or receiving data that we don't want them to. But as long as the, the requests or the commands you push to, you, you ask from the database in the client level is permitted, it will look as, as if you're working in the server, even though you're working on the browser. So for that reason, I have to define the messages collection on, in anywhere, meaning it will be available bo both for the clients and the server. So this is the definition. You see, messages is a new Meteor collection. Messages within the parentheses is the name of the collection in Mongo. Of course, Meteor will create everything automatically for us. Now I'm going to define the server. Okay? This is the server code. Okay? All what's needed. I'll begin from, this, from the fourth line. Instead of developing HTTP endpoints or REST APIs, in Meteor, we, we send data to the clients differently. We define a subset of the collections that we want to be available for the clients, and we publish that subset. Meaning, if a client would want to receive this data, he can subscribe to this publication, and he, ha and he will have a copy of that subset of data in his browser. Maybe later I'll show an example that will make it even clearer, but in, in that publication, what's going, what is happening is that I'm defining a publish that is named messages that whenever someone will want to subscribe to, he will, will have to say how many messages he want to receive. That's the log size. I'm making sure that the log size is not bigger than, one, than 100 messages and that it is an integer. Okay, and then I'm simply getting the, I'm generating a cursor. Um, I know that not all of you are familiar with Mongo, but let's say that what's happening here is that I'm defining the subset of data that will be delivered to whoever subscribed to that publication. So this is these four lines, and here what I basically do is whenever a new message is inserted to the database, I add the current time to it. So later I'll be able to sort the messages by date, by the time they were inserted. This capability is made possible by the collection hooks package that I've installed earlier. And now we'll continue. Now we'll go to define the the client part. You can see that I define it under, wait a sec, under the client folder. It begins by subscribing to the messages publication, asking for 10 messages from it. Then it sets a session variable named username as guest. There is actually, it actually continues here. It's a guest with a random number of four, digit, or four digits. And then, whenever someone will click the button on the message input, 
will check what the value of the of this input is, okay, and then we'll just insert it to the collection. This is how it looks like. We are actually we are in the client right now. We are asking the collection, the messages collection, to insert a new message, and that works. I mean, there is no API with the server here. We just say what we want to do, and since it's permitted, then it works. And the uh, we also defined one helper to the messages area, in which we simply take the subset of messages that we have. Remember that the messages collection in the client is actually only a subset of the actual collection that is in the database. That collection is the collection we received from the subscription to the messages, the subscription I showed you earlier. This subscription has only 10 messages, will always have only 10 messages, and these are the messages that this helper will deliver to whoever will use it. Okay. One last thing is that before insertion of new message, I'm adding to the document the current username. That's all in the client side. Now I'm going to the HTML to actually change the mockup code to the actual load of the messages. Okay. You can see here that I I use the messages helper, which gives me the messages with the each loop and the content of the messages, which is the author and the content of the message, is will automatically be available in in two helpers, which are the the author and the content that I use here. And now it actually already works. It's hard to see with... Okay. The only thing that I didn't like when I developed it is that the input doesn't clear itself after you send the message. So here, after the message is being sent, I'm clearing the input. Okay. And of course, automatically, the browser loads itself. And now, you can see that whenever I send a new message, it clears. Look how fast it was to change the code. Now, now I'm going to add the functionality of changing the nickname of a user. Okay, I'm adding a new template named set nickname. I'm taking uh, UI that I already developed in advance. It will look like here. You saw it earlier, okay? And I'm going to define the event and helper for this template. You can see that now I'm calling template set nickname and Let's fast forward. Okay, I begin by defining a helper that named nickname that returns the current session nickname. Okay, and then I'm adding event that whenever the button is clicked for the nickname, the, we set the, the new username by checking what the current value of the nickname input is. And again, that's it. It's now functioning and it works. Okay, now to deploy the project, all I have to do is to say Meteor deploy open chat to meteor.com. Open chat is already taken, so I use my open chat. You can actually surf to this website right now, my open chat point meteor.com. .meteor and this is basically it. Okay, 
I want to show you a few more things now. I want to demonstrate something about session variables that has to do with, re with the concept of reactivity in Meteor. If you remember, in the code, The value here is, the, is taken from the nickname helper. The nickname, the nickname helper, if you remember, receives its value from the session variable that is named username. Now, if I'll go in the browser and change this, that session variable, to be something else, <coughs> immediately the DOM is being updated. Whenever you call functions within your templates that might become invalidated, meaning in that case, the session might change to another value, Meteor immediately know how to change that part of the DOM to reflect the new value or the new state of the database. That's something that, for web developers, I think might look like magic, because these things we used to work very hard to achieve in the past. Now, another thing I want to show is how the network really look like. Okay. People already took the time to send messages. Great. Go to the network. People in the crowd, please continue to send messages so it will be interesting. Remember that the subscription asks specifically to have only 10 messages as a subset of the messages collection. So, what I want to show you here, what, what we see here is the following. We see, okay, I don't know what's written there. So. Uh -huh. Okay. We, you can see here that I receive a message from the server telling me that the message was removed, okay? And then a new message got inserted, and then you see it again. This is because... Whenever a new message is added, okay, then in order to maintain only 10 messages in the subset of messages that is in the subscription, we have to remove one message. So this is what's happening here. We re first Meteor tell us, remove one message, remove the last message, because it's not longer part of the subscription, and then sends us the, the data about the new one. So you can see that I programmed nowhere the fact that after the 10th message received, I need to remove from the DOM the last message. The reactivity of Meteor does all this for me, for free. And that's, in a way, the main reason I think that Meteor is revolutionary in the realm of web development right now, because it makes it unbelievably rapid to develop web application like the one you see, and much, much more complex today. And this is basically it. Thank you. Uh, anyone has any question? Yes. So it basically used the WebSocket to do the okay. real number stuff. So is it possible to use the socket RO to get, to get the basic controls? I mean, uh, for example, some browsers don't also uh, support WebSocket. Oh, yeah. yeah. They need protocols. Okay. Yeah. The question was whether it's possible to use Socket.io instead of Meteor, right? And whether there is fallback to... Yeah. Now, the question is, uh, the answer is, Meteor already uses a package like, like Socket.io that has fallbacks uh -huh. for uh, cases the browser does not support WebSockets. And you won't find the use case where it won't be enough for you. So you won't need to use uh, socket IO. But if you really want, I believe it, it's possible to do. <laughs> yeah. And 
did auto sub or by direction or data bonding, bonding the model to the V, to the tab V model. Come again, come again. I think so it, is there is some technology like uh, Angular JS, which support by directional data bonding, bonding the data to the domes. It's the same. Uh, I'm not familiarized with Angular, so I can tell. What I can say is that the templates are a very integral part of the Meteor frame, okay? Meaning that, as you can see, the DOM reacts to changes that happen to the server. So, again, I'm not sure what Angular can do, but that's, that's my answer for that question. Anyone else? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy that uh, there is fun <laughs> also. Yeah. For real time? Check. Checks? Chat. Chat. Oh. <coughs> For sure. Uh, oh, you, you ask whether there are, uh, in what other ways we can develop chats? Yes. Okay without using sockets. I think that polling, and long polling, is the only thing that you have, I think. But because you can have it in, it will, it, it can look the same, okay? But, yeah, okay? It, it can look the same to the end user. The, the main difference will be two things. One is to scale, case of long, of long polling, I think it's more difficult. And the second thing is, it will take much more time to develop. It will be much harder to implement. Okay. Anyone else? <laughs> if I have PHP, I use PHP. Yeah. Can I use it in you know, before my debug? Okay. Are you familiarized with JavaScript? <laughs> yes. So look, when you develop in Meteor, you don't really need another language like PHP. You can do everything in JavaScript. So you don't really need PHP. If you're talking about a project that you already have that you want to convert to Meteor, because Meteor is so radically different than what we used to have, it will be, I think, too hard for you to, to switch without rewriting your project. Okay, I'll say it this way. Anyone else? Okay, th thank you again. I can, I can leave the chat open for you. <laughs> we, we, we need to have this in, in conferences. Yeah. Oh, it, uh, oh, trying to hack it already, okay. Uh, as you can see, I didn't do anything to prevent injections, and it, it's secured enough, okay? Thank you all. <laughs>